Hi guys, Ed here, another piece of scrap. Today I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a, an insight into where we're at with the van, what we're doing, why we're not doing things that we should be, and hopefully just give you a, a bit of a look at what's going on, the glamour behind the uh, misery. No, that's not right. The misery behind the glamour. Let's crack on. I for what I'll do today is talk you through the reality behind the glamour of our channel. So what you can see, first of all, is my very tidy workbench where all the magic happens, or maybe doesn't happen, is probably more to the case. We have the van parked in its entirety, occupying pretty much the whole garage. If I just pan back, You'll see how snug it is in there. I thought what I'd do is give you a bit of an update where we are, what we're hoping to do, and why we haven't done as much as you might imagine we have. So, in order to show you around, at the moment I've got a load of stuff in the back that I'll talk you through in a minute. And that I'll show you that in a minute. To fire this up, I need the battery isolation switch because when I first bought the van, it had so many issues regarding draining the battery. I put this on so I always disconnect it now. I think I fixed it to be honest, but you never know. I always keep the bonnet hitched in with a block of wood if you can see that in there and there's not a lot of space between the front of the van and the end of the garage and we'll come in What you can hear is the fan going at full chat. That is because this switch only generally works in one position, the low position. But I've jiggled it and I've got it working at high speed fan. However, if you listen carefully, you might just hear something arcing out in the background. So that's another little job. But I do have a replacement switch, which is a turn knob, which I'm gonna put in here where someone's already very kindly drilled a hole for me. So they must have realized when they drilled that hole that in a few years time, I would have to put in another turn knob to, to, to bypass this. So that's a little job that may or may not get filmed, but it needs to be done before the whole thing bursts into flames. I've got a new choke system. I've replaced the choke cable with this one, which now works. And there we have it. It's been stood for a while. It's possible that the battery's flat. But first of all, we'll check that. I've actually tightened up that earth connection. There we go. What you're experiencing here, everybody, is a typical cold dark morning. So when my friends say, why haven't you brought the van today, Ed? This is why, generally. There we go. Well, nearly. Bit more choke. Now you might notice the oil pressure gauge maxed out as soon as the engine started and now it's dropping off to absolutely nothing. That doesn't mean there's no oil in it, it means the oil pressure sender switch isn't working properly. 
I have looked at it briefly, can't really see anything obviously wrong with the connections. So that's a little job that needs to be done. So that will now sit down onto its peg and it won't move again until I start the engine up next time. However, more in some good news, if I turn this light off, I have all the blue lighting working now on the dashboard which matches the tachometer perfectly and the indicators work look at that and a high beam light it's all very good moving up here we have the center console for the roof which again is a project i'm working on slowly I'm going to put a panel in here and get some toggle switches up to operate various things I've got lined up. What we do have, Dewey rigged in, you may have spotted this loose wire. I actually have a reversing camera now. It's not wired in permanently, it's basically here. So I can see where I actually want to A, put the camera and B, put the screen. So if I pop this into reverse, Ah, we'll cut that bit. So if I pop it into reverse, look at that. I actually get to see what's behind me. Not actually tried reversing with this yet, mind, but we, we will. Well, temporarily we fixed the reversing camera here it's only stuck on to the bodywork so we'll probably end up moving it and the cable just runs in at some point it will be drilled through but only when i know where i want it but i have done a fairly neat job of getting it from the back of the van to the front to be fair now, one of the things I can show you, and it's a bit of a sneak peek of an end of another video that hasn't come out yet, is this. So, you may remember from previous videos, that I spent a long time fitting these running lights. Well, guess what, guys? Behold the magnificence of these because these are now in and working. If I trot round. They are all in and they are working. Haven't been anywhere since, of course, but they are now in and working. I also have something else to show you. indicators I now have both front units working not just one you can hear that blower going can't you and I've replaced the horrible Dalek type with LED indicators but people can see old nasty Dalek indicators horrible horrible nasty things nobody could see them and of course they gave up when I was on the motorway with the hazard lights going or not as it turned out I can give you a sneak peek of something that's currently keeping the van off the road if I just sneak up here we are starting to work on the roof which is a monumental task we're giving it a coat of paint. Oh look, there's Chris. Say hi Chris. No, he's very shy today. So this is something else that's going on in the background, but more on that in another video. I certainly won't tell you what colour it's going to be. In here, here we go, here's a reversing camera. So that is just jury rigged in at the moment. And in here, 
this is going to be fantastic. We have the diesel heater or the kit. So under here we have a diesel heater to go in. This in itself is going to be fantastic. This is going to give me instant heat when we're out camping at car shows without having to rely on the feeble heater from the cab. When we do that video chaps, it's not going to be a how to fit a diesel heater. It's going to be how we fit a diesel heater. So don't get your hopes up. Of course, we also fitted new rear leaf springs and bushes and hangers. It hasn't, unfortunately, fixed what we thought was axle tramp. So we still have an issue somewhere in the transmission, either the gearbox or the torque converter. That's being looked at fairly soon. Because what we have at the moment is juddering and shaking if we pull away quickly on the roundabout or a T-junction. There's something that needs to be sorted out because it is shaking the van to pieces. Now, talking as we are about the transmission issues, this is, well it was, a brand new gearbox mount that we fitted in a previous video. As you can see, it's now on the bench. That's because the vibrations and shuddering have actually ripped it out. That bracket or the bush is no longer central. It's actually come out, well, almost a centimeter where it's been laterally ripped and shaken. So there's another brand new one on the vehicle now. I think it's already doing the same. In here, we have brand new engine mounts. Again, to try and sort out the juddering and shuddering. Hopefully guys, this little update has shown you what we're up to. So in the meantime, stay tuned and we we'll hope to see you soon. So with that, as it's chuffing cold out here, Back to the kettle. See you next time.